If you're planning a day out with kids, especially if they have additional needs such as autism, there are certain things you're going to need to do in order to ensure that that day goes as smoothly as possible and everyone has the best time they possibly can have. I'm Re from mummyof4.com and in today's video, I am gonna be sharing my top tips for making those days out as magical as they can be. These tips are going to be helpful whether you have children on the autism spectrum like I do, or whether you have neurotypical children that do not have additional needs. Lots of these tips are going to help all families. So if you have got children with hidden disabilities such as autism, ADHD, or other things that can't necessarily be seen in an obvious way, getting hold of a sunflower lanyard can be really helpful. My children wear these when we're traveling through the airport, and it's a way for staff there to recognize that the children have needs even though that may not be obvious on the outside. Another thing that's been really helpful for us is getting hold of a Nimbus access card. Now these do cost money, but I'm not working with them anyway. This is not sponsored or endorsed. This is just something I've used for my own children. So I initially got these for the children as a way of approving the disability to get the disability pass, which is called the priority pass in Disneyland Paris as it was one of the forms of proof that Disneyland Paris accepted. But honestly, I'm so glad I got hold of this card and everyone that I've recommended it to has found it really helpful. So to apply for the card, you go to the website, I'll put all the details below, and you upload the required proof to the website along with a passport photo of your child. All of this information is then verified and you are issued with a credit card type card that's kind of like the photo driving license you get with the photo of your child on it. And this card states the needs that your children have. And you can use this as proof in lots of different places where you need to prove that your children have additional needs, such as theme parks, if they struggle with queuing, or anywhere else you're going to need to access extra help for your children. There are lots of benefits with the scheme, such as free carers tickets in places like cinemas, days out, that kind of thing. And it's a widely recognized card. It's so much easier than having to carry around doctor's letters and things that aren't necessarily the required proof in all the different places. So like I said, not endorsed at all, but I find that really helpful and hopefully it will help you out too. My next tip is to do your research before booking and planning your trip. So wherever you're thinking of going, check out the website in advance, look at their accessibility policy. Does that venue have any particular services that they can offer, any quiet spaces that they have, any ways of avoiding queuing for children that struggle with that? Most venues these days have really good accessibility information on their website. But to be honest, a really great place to look for this information is vlogs, which is why when I'm vlogging out and about with my children and we go to theme parks, days out, things like that. I try and include all the accessibility information because it really does vary from place to place. And by watching an unbiased vlog, you can see not just the company's version of what they think their accessibility policy is, but actually how useful it is and how it can be practically used at the venue. So YouTube is a really great resource when you're planning and researching, thinking about where you're gonna take your kids on their days out. I touched briefly on carer's tickets and it's worth checking if when you're doing your research, the venue that you are going to has any carer's ticket options. Often carer's tickets are complimentary if you have a child with a registered disability. Sometimes there are things like quiet hours and autism friendly sessions that you can look into for children that really are overstimulated by the standard opening hours where it can be really noisy. And don't forget to not just check the website, but the social media. Some companies, especially smaller companies, are much better at updating their social media than they are their website. Try and pick your times wherever possible and go for quieter times or off-season times. If you're restricted by school holidays, then try and go for those overlap weeks. Sometimes some counties will have half term one week and others will have it another week. And sometimes on those times where the holidays don't quite align, places will be a lot quieter and not nearly as busy. So it's worth checking not just when your school holidays are, but when the other school holidays in other parts of the country might be. For example, I live in Wales and often our school holidays don't quite align with England, meaning we can get quieter sessions places in England if we're traveling there while the English kids are in school and my kids are off on holiday. 
It's well worth checking out all of the menu situations before you go. And again, looking at food options in vlogs and things. This is important if your children with autism are really picky eaters, which I know can be something that both neurotypical and neurodiverse children can struggle with. But I know children on the spectrum are often a lot more rigid with what they will and will not eat. So make sure you check out all the menu options in advance. That way you can pack snacks, lunches, whatever it might be, if you know your kids are not gonna be able to eat what they have at the venue. And it's always worth downloading maps and apps in advance. So many theme parks and other venues have their own app now, and so much of the information can be found on there. Just remember, the more armed with information you are, the easier it's gonna be for your kids when you get there. With that being said, prepare your kids. I know some families love doing surprise kids. We're going here today. Like we're going on a day out and you've never heard of this place before and we're going, it's really exciting. Or we're going on a holiday today. I've packed your bags, let's go. But for children on the autism spectrum, that can feel really unnerving. I know my children prefer to plan with me and feel really prepared for where they're going. I mean, this is like a twofold thing in that they're involved in the planning, which kind of ekes out the fun anyway. So that in itself is a really valid reason to involve your kids in the planning and preparing. But I know for my children, they enjoy things much more when they have a say and a hand in the planning and they understand where they're going and they can get excited for it. Now, obviously autism is a spectrum, so I can't speak for every person with autism, but how I understand autism to work for my children, and I've discussed this with them and they think I'm pretty close to the mark here. It's like a filter, but their filter has got the dial turned so that they're letting in a bit more information than perhaps a neurotypical person would have. So maybe if I was to walk into a room and see a living room, a couch, and just take a general picture of the room in my mind, and they're trying to take in every single detail. So when they go to a place that either they've been before or they've watched in vlogs and they've got some familiarity with it, they don't have to take in every single detail from scratch. They can just take in the few extras that may have changed since they were last there or some more intricate details. And it just feels like less pressure. Obviously autism can't be summed up in just that one point and it varies for everybody. But I feel that that's how it works for my children and why preparing them really seems to help. Consider using air tags on days out with your kids. Air tags are small discs that can be attached to bags or to your children's wrists using bands that can be tracked using your iPhone. While these are no substitution for keeping a close eye on your children, it's nice to have the peace of mind that if the worst were to happen and you were to lose sight of one of your children or their belongings, then at least you'd know which direction they'd gone in. We use these on days out, when traveling and on our Disney trips for that extra peace of mind. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pack for success. And yes, packing is not restricted to just when you're going away on trips, it can be relevant for day trips too. So going back to the menus, are your children going to be interested in the food that the venue has to offer? Is that venue going to be offering food at a time your child wants to eat? Packing snacks is always a great option because let's face it, hangry children are not happy children. So even if you're planning to eat out, packing snacks can be beneficial in case meals are delayed, people are hungry at different times, you're stuck somewhere. Equally, make sure you pack drinks. My kids always have their own drinks with them. They actually all tend to take their own bags with them wherever they're going. People always say to me, what are your kids carrying in those bags? Well, generally it's snacks, it's their drinks, and the other bits I'm gonna share with you now. Tissues and wipes can always be beneficial, especially if you've always got children who have runny noses or if you're kind of like me and your nose tends to run all year round for no apparent reason, whether it's winter or summer or you have a cold or you don't have a cold. But tissues and wipes can be helpful even if you do not suffer from a perpetually runny nose. Just for wiping up spillages and things, it can help to avoid meltdowns especially if your children have sensory issues about things being sticky or dirty on their hands. It's worth packing comfort items. Although my children don't take their bunnies with them everywhere now, bunnies are really, really precious and they're worried about losing them. But when they were smaller, we did used to strap their bunnies to their chests when they had those backpacks that actually clipped on their chests and they used to wear them kind of like a baby carrier or a sling. And those were really helpful, especially when they were at the age where they were napping out and about. Now, obviously, they take comfort items like their bunnies with them if we are traveling away overnight. They have them with them if we're flying or on a long journey. But they wouldn't now carry them around a theme park or day out, that kind of thing. 
but if you feel that your child would benefit from having a comfort item such as a teddy or a soft toy with them if they're going to be in a situation where maybe they would be overstimulated it might be worth packing securely inside a bag boredom busters are helpful for all kids but especially for kids on the spectrum when they're struggling with things like waiting and queuing so this can look like pen and paper for drawing, it might be screens loaded up with games or music, audiobooks or TV shows or films that they find comforting. These can be really great for distracting kids that maybe are teetering on a meltdown if they're dealing with overwhelm or are especially bored and fidgety waiting in lines. Because remember, even if you are accessing the priority lanes, the disability queues, there still will be some form of waiting around if you're visiting theme parks or going on various other days out. Sensory toys can be really helpful, things like fidget toys or anything else that can be fiddled with if your children find that comforting. Another thing that children, especially with autism, may find helpful are ear defenders. These come in lots of different varieties. You can have ear defenders that look like big over-the-ear headphones that aren't actually headphones, they just block out a lot of the noise. Or you can get the inner ear loops which are better for older children when their ears are a little bit larger, but can just block out some of that noise because obviously if you're going to very busy venues, theme parks, things like that, the noise can be very overwhelming for children on the spectrum. The other thing you can do is just take over the ear actual headphones, which is what I tend to do. My older ones actually take inner ear headphones and that seems to be enough for them. But my youngest can't really cope with the inner ear ones because her ears are too small and the over ear headphones double up as a good way to listen to music or audiobooks. It's important to think about clothing if you're going on days out with your kids. And my suggestion would be if you're going out with children with autism, do not put them in something that they've never worn before on a big long day out because if you get out and then you realise that you're dealing with some sensory issue like itchy scratchy labels or something that isn't comfortable, then that's going to add extra stress and pressure to your day that you just don't need. Often clothes that have been worn before that smell a bit more familiar, that smell like the laundry detergent that you use and you know they're comfortable in, you know they don't have anything itchy or scratchy on them are going to be a safer bet. And if you are going to a big day out, maybe it's a wedding or something where your children need to wear something that looks really new and fresh for that event, I would suggest making sure you've very least tried that outfit on your children before that day to make sure that they are comfortable with everything that they are wearing and nothing's going to upset them on the day. Days out with kids with autism can obviously be an exciting thing but can be quite overwhelming as well and you don't want something as simple as clothing to end up ruining the day. It's always worth having spares in case of spillages, things like that and layers because nobody wants to get too hot or too cold and end up having that as a contributing factor to a meltdown. Make sure you're planning your travel for your days out. What is that going to look like? Make sure you've planned out your breaks and things. Some kids on the spectrum are absolutely great with traveling and some of them really struggle with it. And keep this in mind how well your child travels when planning your days out. Sometimes it might be worth, if you're going on a day out that's quite a way away, driving up the day before, staying overnight in a local basic hotel and then being fresh to enjoy your day out rather than showing up tired, overwhelmed and unable to enjoy the place when you get there. It's really important to communicate with staff when you're there and advocate for your child. So even if they are wearing a sunflower lanyard, even if they are having a visible meltdown, staff may not notice, understand the struggles or feel comfortable intervening or offering help unless you've asked for it. So unfortunately, as parents of children with additional needs, we do have to be able to use our voices and ask for things even if we feel a little bit uncomfortable ourselves. Often it's helpful to introduce yourself to staff in the venue and ask in advance of when you actually need the help about what help is available and just pre-warn people that you may need some assistance. I like to do this when we get onto flights and things and that way preempting the fact that we may need some help. People are often more than happy to help. As long as you're polite, you'll generally find people are very helpful. It's really important to schedule breaks throughout the day. Trying to cram too much into your day can be a little bit of a recipe for disaster at times. By planning to rest at regular intervals for snacks, toilet breaks, that kind of thing, can break up the day, limit the overwhelm, and ultimately end up being a calmer and happier experience for everyone. 
I think one of the biggest things that we need to be aware of as parents of children with additional needs is looking for early signs of overwhelm. Dealing with a full blown meltdown is really, really challenging. So if we can notice the early warning signs of when children are starting to struggle, maybe feeling like they're starting to get overwhelmed, if at that stage we can intervene, we can change the situation, we can go to a calmer area, we can take a break, we can do a toilet break, we can do a snack break, we can do a drink break. Often those meltdowns can be avoided altogether and everyone ends up having a much more pleasant day. We do need to practice flexibility and this can be a little bit of a challenge and a lesson for us as parents and also for children on the spectrum. Often children with autism can be quite rigid in what they expect and it can be quite valuable to talk about in advance that look these are our plans but sometimes things change and sometimes we have to pivot and do something else instead. Like when someone is perhaps feeling overwhelmed and we need to change our plans to incorporate more breaks. I do feel that practicing this flexibility when sometimes we're planning to do X, Y and Z, say on one of our Disney days, and then when we get there we can't fit it all in or an attraction is down or wherever it might be, these are really valuable life lessons that we can talk about with our children and help them through. So hopefully as they get older and they are faced with changing situations as adults, then we've prepared them for them when they are children because these situations can sometimes be really challenging for kids with autism. It's really worth reflecting and kind of debriefing after a day out. What went well? What would you like to do again? Is it a venue you'd recommend or is it something that really was not suitable for your children you wouldn't want to do again? Talk to your kids. What about the day did they enjoy? What about the day did they struggle with? And really just making notes for next time. The way I plan days out for my kids, the way I pack for days out for my kids, ultimately comes from trial and error, from doing something, thinking, hey, that went well, let's do that again, or wow, I didn't have X, Y, or Z with me and that would have made the day easier, or ooh, that didn't go well, shan't do that again. If we can kind of learn from what went wrong and what went well, then future days out can go even smoother. I've got a whole playlist of videos for parents with kids with autism, which I'm gonna link on screen now. And if you're thinking of traveling to Disney with kids on the spectrum, then I've got a whole playlist of Disney specific autism tips that I'm also gonna to link to. Or check out my Patreon for early release content. I shall see you in one of those videos or over in my Patreon. Thanks guys, see you soon, bye.